Whether it is the uh, trigger warnings on Harry Potter books, the rebranding of chocolate sweet characters or general political messages, businesses, social media companies and the media itself appear to be contributing towards what we now call council culture, where prestige opinions rule over all others. Now, this is something my next guest calls the silo effect. Helen Dale is a writer, lawyer and former political advisor, and she joins me now on Free Speech Nation. Helen. Nice How do you to do? see you. Good to see you. So I read an article, but actually it was a review of my book. So I should <laughs> I should say that out loud straight away. I don't just invite people on who give me good reviews, by the way. But what I would but what I would say is you you used this phrase that I thought was fascinating in relation to cancel culture, which I hadn't heard before. This concept of the silo effect. And I contacted you, say, where did you get this? And you've 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 coined this yes. this phrase. Can you explain what? Because I think this really helps to explain an element of cancel culture that people are grappling with. What do you mean by the silo effect? When I talking about the silo effect, I'm talking about what is done to people who are too big to cancel but small enough to ignore. Mm -hmm. So you get someone like J JK Rowling or Joe Rogan, they're not only too big to cancel, they can't be ignored. Yeah. And if Rogan is chased from Spotify, he will just take his enormous audience to Rumble or Odyssey or one of the others yeah. and that will be to Spotify's loss. Especially, I mean, I used to be a corporate lawyer. I have some idea of what kind of agreement they've likely reached. Yeah. And if Rogan goes, it will be very expensive for Spotify. That's all I'll say. Yes. J.K. Rowling, still selling everything. Yeah. Very, very small people can just be fired from their jobs. It's the end of their careers, uh, that, which is why you don't get new rising comics to, yes. to, to go to your industry trying to be the next, next Ricky Gervais or Frankie Boyle right. because yeah. it's too, too edgy, too risky, in trouble. In the middle are people like you. You can't be cancelled. You've become successful as a result of your, your character Titania McGrath. My article that I wrote for mag an American magazine called Law and Liberty actually reviewed Andrew's latest book on free speech and why it matters. And the guts of what I say, and Andrew's re retweeted it, you, but Law and Liberty isn't paywall, so you can go and read it, is that the people who need to read your book, who most need to read it, mm. won't. No, they, I know, I'm they aware of this. They just won't do it. And that is the silo effect. Because I've been put in a certain bracket. You've been put in a box. It, this is nothing to do... It can't be addressed by governments. It's nothing to do with trying to get people fired. I had a cancel culture campaign directed at me many years in a, ago in Australia. It didn't work. All it did was make the novel that I wrote at the time a massive bestseller. Yes. I couldn't be cancelled. They had to put up with me. So I was put into the conservative commentator box. But even then, until 2016, I'm going to make you laugh now. The first article I ever wrote about cancel culture was in 2015. It was published. I didn't call it cancel culture then. We didn't have that word. Yeah. And it was published in The Guardian. Which would never happen today. Which would, me, in The a, Guardian. A conservative yeah. in The Guardian writing about cancel culture, forget about it. Forget right? it. Okay. It's never going to happen. So, and that is because, I suppose this gets back to the idea of tribalism, isn't it? It's like you put people in the boxes, irrespective of what they really believe or really think. They become, uh, I suppose, persona non grata, don't they? They get put in that particular box. And this is important because I think one of the examples, when we talk about cancel culture, people often mention people like J.K. Rowling and say, look, well, you say cancel culture is a thing. She's still selling more books than ever. Mm. But Gillian Phillip a children's author who merely supported Rowling, she lost her publisher and her agent. Uh, she lost her publisher and her agent. And to, to complete the rest of the Gillian Phillips story, which is, an, if you imagine three tiers yeah. with Rowling and Rogan at the top, people like you or me or Douglas Murray somewhere in the middle, so we can't be cancelled, we've got too much money, too much influence, can be, but can be siloed. And then you've got at the, the bottom tier of people who are just beginning authors or someone who, like, for example, Gillian Phillip mainly wrote pseudonymously yep. as part of a series. Now, to, to finish the rest of that story, she re retrained. She, her publishing career was so destroyed, she retrained as an HGV driver. Yes. So if you see a big truck <laughs> getting around the highways of Britain... It might have Gillian Phillip behind the wheel. But isn't that terrible when people say cancel culture is a myth? And you can point at this woman and say, she's, she's literally doing, she's driving a truck rather than writing books. Yes. Because people complained about her support of another she, author. She, the, one retweet. And that was all it was? Yeah, it was a retweet. So th this is what baffles me about this. There are so many, I mean, that's just one example. I mean, I could list, in fact, in my book, I've got a footnote where I list lots and lots of examples. Mm. And yet continually we get this denial 
of, of and they use the big names to to deny that cancel culture exists. But like you say, there is that tier of people. Cancel culture, more often than not, affects people who can't don't have the resources to protect themselves, right? No, that's exactly right. And there you're Brian Leaches and Gillian Phillips and and I mean it would have been Mayor Forstarter would have gone down that mm. path as well. But then that also engaged aspects of the legal profession and, and lawyers are fairly good at defending themselves or people with legal expertise are yes. fairly good at defending themselves. And you notice the effectiveness of an organisation like, for example, the Free Speech Union or Fair Cop, There's yeah. another one, Sarah Fillimore and Harry Miller. He's an ex-copper. She's a barrister. So if you start picking on the legal profession, yeah. you know, they, they, they won't always win, but they'll make your life very difficult because yes. they know how to make your life difficult. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes lawyers have a bad reputation, although here it can be yes. a useful thing. So but the siloing is, is this phenomenon of it's not from government, it's not from the state, it's just a very deliberate decision to close the blinds on the other side. It is worse on the left, but I'm starting to see it on the right yes. as well. So it's sort of contagious. So is it, for instance, when, when commentators like Owen Jones at The Guardian call people like Julie uh, uh, Bindle, whatever, the transphobic or implied... Or she's, whatever or, it is, yes. Whatever it is. Um, they're basically effectively saying this person, they're siloing that person, they're saying this person is not uh, worthy of, our, uh, of discussion, that they, they shouldn't be involved in this. And discussion. then what happens, and Suzanne Moore has described this very well, she went from The Guardian, where one audience read her, yes. to... The Mail, where another audience read her. Yes. And she said, oh, my neighbours, who'd always read me in The Guardian, it was as if I'd ceased to exist. And then the same thing happened in reverse when she went from, I think, The Mail to The Mirror. And these are tabloids. Yes. So it, she ceased to exist. You know, people, oh, I haven't seen you in the paper for years. Are you still writing, Suzanne? You know, just people... Well. I, I, I think this is fascinating, and, and that's a really good way to describe it, to think about it, people being siloed rather than cancelled. I think it's yes. a fascinating way to look at it. Thank you very much for joining me today, Helen Dale. Thank you. Um,